Okay, so I've got my four contour line drawings in, and <clears throat> I'm gonna start in my first uh, drawing, um, which is gonna be shading with pencil. So I am going to be looking at my reference. Um, you guys might look at your reference on your phone. I do have mine printed just because it's easier to show the camera. Um, if you've got a color reference, which I would highly recommend because you're gonna do one in color pencil, um, remember, if you're using your phone as a, a source to look at it, um, you can, um, you know, take that picture and um, just desaturate it totally in your phone um, to see it as a black and white image. Um, you could do a screen capture of it if you're looking, you know, at it on the internet. Um, this is a good way just to see, like, where are my lights and shadows so quickly. Um, so, there with... Um, you know, pencil, pencil is, uh, this is just a regular 2B pencil. It's pretty soft. Um, it's fairly easy to shade with. Um, you know, when you're shading, there's a couple things you can do um, with mark um, and with your hand pressure um, to get different values. So when I look at this drawing, I wanna capture the values that I see on this paper and kind of bring it over to my drawing as close as I can. Um, so, you know, if you've not worked a lot with pencil, um, or it's been a little while, or, you know, even if you have done this, I, I it's a good, um, practice to have a scratch sheet. I'm going to use the borders of this paper since I've got so much border, um, as a scratch sheet to practice some of my materials. Um, one good way to practice is to create a value scale. Um, so start with the darkest. Rawr. Darkest, darkest, darkest gray you can get. And I'm getting this by moving my pencil back and forth, kind of layering my marks. I'm using not the tip of my pencil, you see, but the side of my pencil. Um, if I want to go a little bit lighter, I'm just going to reduce my pressure. I'm gonna see if I can maybe get these as close as I possibly can. I don't wanna add too much pressure too quickly or I'm gonna get the gray that I've already gotten. Try to kind of feather these two together a little bit by layering. Okay, good, so those two grays. Uh, let's see if I can get another one just with my hand pressure. That's when I'm having to really barely touch the paper. This graphite's pretty soft. That looks a little lighter to my eye. Let's see if I can get lighter still. So I can see a number of these grays here. Maybe I can take this one a little bit darker. Not too much, but a little bit darker. All right, I see three steps there. I'm going into my lighter values. Um, if I get too dark, um, and I want to lighten it up, I can use my kneaded eraser. If you guys got a kneaded eraser in your kit, so you can take your kneaded eraser. It's kind of like Play-Doh. You can mold it into whatever shape you want. You, one good way to use it is just to lightly pick up. So I've got it like sort of here on my finger, and I'm just going to press it down the paper. I'm not rubbing back and forth. I'm just pressing. And that picks up a little bit of my shading and makes this uh, value lighter. You can also, you know, use your finger to blend colors out, blend value out. That's gonna make it lighter the further away you move from the uh, graphite. Um, with a drawing as small as we're doing, if you wanna do any blending like this, you might want like a Q-tip to work with. Um, but do practice um, seeing how many different grays you can get just with the pressure of your hand and with blending. You want some light grays and some middle grays and your dark, dark grays. If you want to take this, this is, mm, 
this is a pretty dark version. I might be able to get a little bit darker if I come back in the other direction, keep on layering. Okay, so that's a little bit about um, value scale. Um, you know, next we can talk about marks you might make with your hand as you're laying the pencil down. Um, one way to keep your um, sketch uh, pretty smooth is instead of like going with the tip, like drawing sort of with the side and moving your pencil in kind of a circular motion and layering. So this works well for kind of filling smaller areas and it keeps your mark from, it keeps your pencil from having a lot of directional mark in it because you're kind of overlapping and overlapping circles. Again, you don't want to do this with the tip. If I did it with the tip, it would look like that. I'm doing this with the side. You can hold it, you know, back sort of like this, or you can also hold it up here. If you hold it up here, this lets you vary the pressure sometimes a little bit more readily. So I'm going to take this sort of circular method and I'm going to start darkening down here at the bottom. See, this gives you some control over your value. Um, other ways to create value in a drawing. Um, so, you know, you can fill in directionally instead of circle. This is going to give you some rougher texture, which can be nice sometimes. Um, you can, you know, layer a mark like this to get darker or different textures. Um, again, this is a good one to, to press down with your, your finger and give just a little extra pressure when you need to darken. Um, let's see what else can you do. Um, if you want something that's going to have a lot more mark in it, you can use more of the tip of your pencil. Um, so straight single lines kind of close together can make, you know, value. If you want darker value, you can also cross hatch. So that's going across those initial lines you made in a different direction. So the closer the lines are to one another, they start to have, you know, the impression of darker value. Of course, this has a lot of texture in it. Um, hatching doesn't always have to be straight. It can be curved. So it can go along the edge of a form and be curved. You know, your cross hatching can be curved as well. It's fun to practice curving your cross hatching. All right. Um, so those are all some different mark uh, types of mark you can use with your shaded drawings. And, um, you know, uh, how to start playing around with that value scale and get some light and dark. Um, so my pencil lead is about to fall out, so this gives me a good opportunity um, to say something about drawing pencils. Um, now this isn't a very fancy pencil, this is just kind of a, a regular school pencil, but you know, whenever you're working with drawing tools, um, you want to avoid uh, using, um, um, you want to avoid using like automatic pencil sharpeners, like mechanized pencil sharpeners, and use hand sharpeners um, to sharpen them. The um, ones like we sometimes have in the school classroom where you just put the pencil in and it's like, and it sharpens it for you. Like those tend to break the lead on the inside. Um, so it's better to sharpen them by hand. The lead's still gonna break sometimes, but it's better uh, for the life of your pencil. You can really start to break the lead not only out here, but inside so that no matter how many times you sharpen it, you're gonna keep on running into cracks. So, um, so I'm gonna take a look at my drawing um, here. And I've just started it so you guys wouldn't have to you know, uh, see me shading the whole background um, in. Um, so I, I started kind of layering with the side of my pencil and filling in. Um, as I look at my image that I'm working from, I think I want to take this much darker, but this is a good starting place. Um, so I'm going to start looking for 
shading and where I'm gonna put it. I can see almost nothing, not, almost nothing in this picture is the white of the paper. So I'm gonna have to take away the majority of this white. The only white I wanna see is where I have the brightest highlights. Um, I've got really dark in the background, so I'm gonna to wanna to take this darker with layering. Um, most of this drawing is gonna be kind of middle grays, different middle grays. So um, let me go ahead and get to the shading some and we'll see how far we get with this. So.
So I've got pretty gotten pretty far along with my shading, um, adding some more value. Um, the next step is just to kind of look and see, you know, are there some areas of this highlight that I can take a little bit um, darker? Maybe some things that I wouldn't consider the brightest highlight. Like some of these areas of the, of the um, leaves of the strawberry, I definitely think I could take darker. Um, this whole midsection, it looks like I could take darker too. Um, so the next step will be to just work on that. The background, you can see I've uh, you know definitely developed a nice range of values. Maybe take this middle part a little darker. I'll keep challenging myself to get it as close as I can to the photo and the, the shading that I see there. All right, well you guys work on your um, pencil drawings, practice your shading. And I can't see, I can't wait to see what you come up with.